Hey, what's up everybody? This is Marin. Welcome back to our course on Beginning Realm on iOS. And in this part of the series, we're going to learn how to add reactive features to your app by using Realm's built-in notification mechanism. Let's get started. With generic database storages, the initiative of refreshing the data you show on the screen remains in your app's code. And this increases the difficulty of keeping your UI up to date. Because as changes happen on disk in your database, you also need to propagate within your application that event that data has changed so that your UI knows to reload, refresh the data, and update the controls on screen. Realm has its own notification mechanism, uh, which will let you know whenever any data changes in the Realm file. Now this is built in the Realm core, so it's a, on a very low level. There is no um, significant overhand to observing for these changes at all. And so instead of pulling for data from your app's code, you only need to react to Realm's notifications and update the UI on screen. The first topic in this video, we're going to look into collection notifications. When you have results, for example, in your view controller, uh, like in this course's project, you can call a method on the results object called add notification block and provide a closure as a parameter to that method to execute any time the data and the particular collection changes. Uh, it works pretty much the same way for a list as well. Uh, the method is add notification block uh, and it's executed each time uh, one of the objects in the list changes, uh, you add a new object or remove one from the list. The closure gets a single parameter, which can be one of these three enum cases. If the parameter is the initial case, that means uh, the closure has been just provided to add notification block and you're being called uh, to just let you know about the initial state of the collection. If the parameter is the update case, that means the collection has changed and then enum case contains the list of indexes that have been either modified or inserted or removed from the collection. Uh, now with these indexes, you can take them and update your table or collection view or uh, in any other way, your UI. So you have all the information to um, update, just cherry pick the components that you need to update, the rows that you need to update and uh, update them with that information. So let's see that in action. I have to tell you, it's a real pleasure to get to this episode of the video course because, well, it's not only a pleasure, it's actually a relief because so far we've been holding off of using some of the best features in the Realm database. And namely, of course, you already uh, heard about those, the reactive features, the notification mechanism of, uh, of Realm. And so instead of hitting every time the refresh button on the feed view controller in your app, you will make it so that Realm tells you whenever there are any new messages, no matter if you inserted one yourself or some came from JSON and so forth, and so that you can only react to those notifications and reload the table view automatically. And so come here in the feed table view control Swift and just under the messages property, let's add a notification token. Okay, and so the token is something you create. Basically, Realm will give you a token object. And so as soon as you keep it somewhere in memory, Realm will deliver notifications for the subscription that you've made. And so as long as the message token is not nullified, basically as long as it is released by something, you will be receiving subscription notifications. It's pretty easy. Let's do it a couple of times and you will figure it out right away. And so, Let's move on to view the load. And just after this line here, let's create a subscription. First of all, the result we want to assign to the messages token. So you start with messages token equals. And then we have the list in here, uh, whether it's a results or a list, uh, it all works in the same way for all the realm notifications, um, realm collections. So choose the add notification method. And in here, I'd like to just delete all of that. It's a little confusing. So you can just put in an empty block and we're gonna fill in details ourselves. First, we don't want to retain the view control. So let's say week self. Second, 
the block takes a single parameter called changes. So changes will be what gives us an idea what kind of change has happened to the collection. Right, just as discussed on the slides, that block will be called instantly upon subscription with the initial state of the collection and then upon each change. Now, first of all, let's unwrap the table view, make sure that the view control hasn't been released meanwhile. Okay, and here, now that we have the table view, we can switch over the changes. As I said, there's three cases in that enum type, so we can do different things for each of them. Upon subscription, it's a good practice to just call reload data on your table view just to make sure that the table view is updated with the initial state. It might already show the initial state, but if you're moving code around and so forth, it's just a measure to make sure that it always does show the latest state. Like so. The next case is when actually something changes afterwards. So an object has been inserted or moved or updated. Arguably, autocomplete for in some cases can be much, much better. Now, the first parameter is the actual collection. We don't need it. We just need the indexes in that collection that have been deleted, inserted, or modified. Okay, and uh, project already includes a method that will take those indexes and update the table view, let's call it. Okay. We're going to delve into this in a second. Just let's add the last case in here to clear the errors. If there is an error, in that case, just probably do nothing. We don't expect anything, any problems in here. Now, what is apply changes? What is this magical method? Well, it's an extension that is included in the project. As you can see, it's very, very short. Uh, what it does is just to call the built-in table view methods to begin an update and then to delete the rows that are not needed anymore in the table to insert new rows whenever we want new rows and to reload the rows that have been basically match indexes that have been modified and then call end updates it's really really simple grab it and just copy it over to any project that you uh, are developing with realm and ui kit okay so this is our subscription. We also, in the end, we might want to do more updates. So we're not bound to the table view itself. Of course, since this is a collection, we want to update the table view, but then after the switch, actually we can do more updates to the UI. For example, I can change the title of the tab itself and the view controller, of course, itself and to say feed brackets and in the brackets, the number of messages. And okay, since that in that case is an optional, I can also add or zero, although that will never be the case, but here it clears the warnings. Okay, and so every time there's a change to that messages list, that block will get executed, updated table view, updated the title, and that's it. Let's run the code and see the effect. All right, you can see that if we wait a little bit, the next time the timer fires and fetches some more JSON, we'll see objects basically getting inserted like so. So Jennifer uh, was just inserted that, that message from Jennifer. If we wait just a little bit more, whenever any change happens, those new objects just pour in from the top because that other piece of code is inserting them into the messages list. And as soon as that happens, we're being notified and our code block is being executed. And as you can see, the title updates as well uh, from within that line. Now that we have 31, now we have 32. If we wait more, we'll have more and so forth. And now we really don't need any more that reload, that annoying reload button that nobody wants to be clicking all of the time to just get new messages. So we, you can just draw, delve right into the chatter assets folder. Here is the main storyboard. And if you can just uh, scroll down, here it is. That's the feed view controller. I'm going to select the refresh button and delete it like so, because I'm so happy that my list is now self-updating. I don't need to, you know, periodically refresh, reload any of that. And of course, that's the basics of realm notifications. You're going to learn a little more about the token 
in the challenges section. Do the challenge. It's going to be very beneficial for you. You're going to have a look at the object notifications and also at how to stop notifications by using the token. Now, another type of notification you can subscribe to are object notifications. Oftentimes, you're interested in a single object in your realm uh, and you want to be notified about changes on that particular object only. Uh, the API looks very familiar. Uh, you call add notification block on your object instance and as a parameter to your closure, you receive what kind of a change particularly happened to that single object. Uh, if, if the parameter is the change in case, uh, one or more properties on that object have been changed meanwhile. So you have the um, list of object changes that you can iterate over, um, have the name of the properties which have been changed in their old and new values as well. So you have old information about all the changes that happened in that single event. Uh, if the objects that um, if the object that gets uh, passed to your closure is the uh, deleted case, um, then in that case the object you're observing has been deleted from uh, another thread or the same thread. Uh, doesn't matter, but it has been deleted. So uh, you might want to update the UI accordingly. And of course, in the end, you can also have an error case if any other arbitrary error has happened meanwhile. So that's it for this video tutorial. And now, as always, we have a challenge for you. Your challenge for this video is to first add a single object notifications to your profile view controller, and then move on to the favorites view controller and add a results notifications to that uh, controller as well. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.